Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today I'm in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina visiting Sparks Toyota and I'm checking out a 2020 Toyota Corolla in the SE trim level. This Corolla is sitting on 225, 40 Dunlop tires wrapped around 18 inch alloy wheels with a dark gray finish. It also has four wheel disc brakes with ventilated rotors in the front and solid rotors in the back. The name of this color is Classic Silver Metallic. Kind of cloudy day, but hopefully you get an idea of what it looks like. Okay, so here in the front, the grill is basically an elongated honeycomb pattern in a gloss black. And you have some black accents there. Now the headlights and the lighting up here is kind of interesting because there's a lot of accent lighting and the daytime running lights are actually part of the headlights. Uh, so you would think that right in here would be your daytime running light right here. But actually this light is LED and then you have some lights here, here and here as all accent lighting. And they're very subtle, so they're not even, you can't really see them all well in the daytime. I mean, you can, but they're uh, a little bit subtle. The daytime running light is actually part of the headlight. Now, there's he LED headlights in a projector tube for your low and your high beams. And they just refocus the beam. You can see it has this black bezel. Your turn signals are LEDs as well. Now, you see these inner portions here and here. Those are just basically just for looks. There's no light that shines out of them. Uh, they do have a little accent, but there's actually no like headlights or anything shining out of these. All the headlights, the light coming from the headlights are in the projector tubes only. So looking at the profile, you can see that the door handles and side mirror are all body colored. You have an accent in black down here at the base of the vehicle. And I like the way the wheels look. They really look good, uh, the alloy wheels. Now some of the trims have hubcaps with a steel wheel, so this is an improvement on that. And the pillars are blacked out. So that way if you were to tint the glass, you know, kind of give you that solidified look. This is what the key looks like. And it has some buttons on here, lock and unlock. The ability to open up the trunk and a panic button. And there's a physical key right here. That's what you use to start it up little switch blade style which is pretty cool so locking and unlock is fairly simple now let's go ahead and push the trunk button and see what happens okay so you can see it goes up just a little bit it doesn't go up all the way you'll have to lift it up which is not a big deal but I just want to show you that and let's go ahead and see what the horn sounds like by pushing the panic button now if the battery ever goes bad in the key fob, you can of course use the key, this physical key to unlock the door because there's a physical key location here on the driver's side. So looking at the inside of the door, you can see it's black with a light gray there on top. Blue stitching, kind of subtle right in here, looking nice. Soft touch surfaces here, here, and then you have your hard touch surfaces down in here. Nice bottle holder, little space to put some stuff there. And then you have a metallic accent to match the handle right in here. It's kind of a satin and it continues down there looking pretty cool. Kind of a simplified looking door to me. Manually adjusted cloth seats here on the passenger side in gray. Kind of the normal gray that you'd find in, in vehicles. There's a little accent stripe there. So there's your floor space. It kind of tilts up a little bit. I'll get in in just a minute to show you what, how much room I have. Soft touch dash here and here. It's kind of like a rubbery type material up there. You have more of that metallic accent, which is nice. Take a look at the glove compartment. 
smooth plastic, really good size, and it has like a little soft landing. The inside of the back door, similar it look as the front, but you have hard touch surfaces. The only soft touch surface you have is right here on your armrest. You have a little pocket there and down there. And the door doesn't swing out quite wide enough in my opinion. Uh, so like say the front door, you have more of an opening, but you also have a wider swinging door. So this door kind of limits your ability to get in, I, I suppose. We'll find out when I get in. So there's a pocket on the back of the passenger seat, but not the driver's seat. It's basically a bench seat back here. Very, very subtle bolstering there on the bottom, a little bit more on the back. Has armrests with cup holders here that you can get out of the way. A little storage pocket there on the back of the console and a kind of a small hump in the center so it's not a big deal i guess okay so time to get in the vehicle so wide opening door here in the front dashboard kind of sticks out a little bit but let's go ahead and get in Kind of low for me i'm six feet tall so it's a little bit of a drop down to get in put the seat all the way back just to give you an idea so this is probably where i'd like to be um, i could probably move it up to right about there if i had to that's not too bad gives me a good uh but my, my, i'm limited on how far i can put my feet out but the angle of the floorboard is a nice angle so this would be fairly comfortable this will be bare minimum, but I'd probably prefer the far back position. Armrest is pretty good. I can still access the glove compartment here. Has a little storage pocket that I can access here as a passenger. I can play around with the radio. The dash is nice, uh, soft, and non-reflective. Okay, so let's uh, let's put the seat all the way back, and let's see if I can fit in the back, because that's going to be a challenge, I think. Okay, so the doors doesn't swing as wide. This gets in the way a little bit, and the seat is all the way back. So let's see if I can fit in. back here okay so I actually can um, my knees are pressed up against the seat but the seat is soft um, I can kind of like do that number and uh, so yeah this isn't bad I can access that little pocket there I can access this pocket I got a pocket here I can access that kind of this kind of gets in the way handle little hook for clothes I can access that light okay so let's scoot in the center position that's gonna be a challenge I'm trying to scoot there just because my feet are in are getting wedged underneath the seat okay so this seat is more in the in a, um, a regular position okay so so this is a little bit better so this is kind of I think the the front passenger can compromise a little bit if there's somebody sitting in the in the back seat um, but right here in the center not the most comfortable seat in the world but it's still adequate for you know fairly decent trips I guess uh, the hump in the center doesn't really help but um, I'd have to kind of straddle it either way so moving over here with the seat more in a forward position this is way better here so now I can, uh, I got some leg room, I got some arm room, you know, I can kind of get a little bit uh, breathing room. This isn't right directly in my face. 
but yeah overall let's see how it is getting out so there's a there's a quite a bit of a lift right there for my foot to get over okay so you can see that you know kind of limited on the door swinging out and all that stuff headroom my headroom has been fine the whole time just want to mention that until i get out <laughs> all right a little bit hard for me to get out but uh i am getting pretty old so that might be part of it but yeah that's i mean for the size of the vehicle and everything i'm surprised i was actually able to sit in the past the back seat with the front seat all the way back Okay, so looking at the back of the vehicle, it has a little shark fin antenna up there, uh, this body colored, and third brake light is here in the base of the glass, powered by LEDs. It does have a body, mat, a body colored deck lid spoiler. That's kind of subtle, but not too subtle. Now the tail lights are a combination of LED and standard bulbs. The tail lights, like the Traditional tail lights and brake lights are LEDs. The reverse lights and turn signals are standard bulbs. So it does have little exhaust tips there on the muffler on the right side, looking pretty nice. Chrome. You have the gloss black there with the honeycomb kind of matching the front, just for looks back here, of course. Now the backup camera, surprisingly, is offset right in here. Uh, and there's no button to open up the trunk back here. So we will need to use the key. So let's get the key out. Press and hold. And remember it goes up just a little bit. I like the SE badging in red. That's nice. So under here you just have the LED lights. For the tag, this is empty. So they could have put the or a backup camera in the center. I'm not sure why it's offset. I guess that they're gonna, in some other trim levels, they'll have a button there or something, but um, you know, I think that could have been in the center, in my opinion. Okay, so here's the trunk, and really big relative to what I was expecting. Um, goes in there quite a ways the width is nice and it has one of these like thin floors uh, and it lands on basically supported only by the styrofoam here with the tools and spare tire which is nice that it does have a spare tire it's kind of a donut style now there is some exposed metal up in here and the seats fold down in a 60-40 split fashion so you can add to your cargo space while still maintaining passenger space uh, by folding one of the other. Or you can fold both of them down and add, you know, a lot more to your cargo space back here. Has a locking fuel door and it's on the driver's side. Has a traditional cap, tether, and a little place to hang the cap while you're pumping gas. So let's go ahead and start it up the traditional way because that's the way you do it with the key. Here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. Now the floor mat's not in place yet, but it does have the place, uh, these places here to hook it in so it doesn't slide around on you. There's your accelerator and brake pedal and a footrest over here. Let's take a look under the hood. To open the hood, there is a latch right here in the center. Just reach in, you move it to the left and lift it up. Now it's a very light hood, one of the lightest I've seen. And so here's the latch here. It actually has this little rubber seal around the outside. I wonder if that's to keep this from getting too hot while you're reaching in, I suppose. It has a seal across the front. So the hood's light, uh, does require a prop to hold it up. It's here on the underside of the hood. Swing down and put it next to the arrow. Now you notice the underside of the hood, there's no insulation or anything. So it's a very light uh, aluminum hood, apparently. There's a seal across the back. So the seals are typically for airflow, but also you know noise and stuff like that. So the top of the strut towers are right here. 
and they are actually uh, support you know, braced in with a unibody structure of the vehicle to kind of stabilize the front. You have some heat shielding back there, a little bit of insulation as well on the firewall. And the battery is easy to get to right there. No insulation on that. Now the engine is not covered up with a big piece of plastic, which is nice. Um, so we can actually see some stuff here. I like the addition of the purple bolts. That's nice. Wonder whose idea was, was that? Okay, so it's a 2.0 liter four cylinder engine with the intake here in the front and the exhaust in the back. Uh, that would explain the heat shielding back there. And you can actually see the coil packs going down to each cylinder. Uh, right straight down is your spark plug. Now this, this four cylinder engine paired to a CVT automatic transmission. I don't have all the specs and dimensions of this vehicle and a tremendous amount of information on all the trim levels uh, in the description. So you can click that link. If you want to get all the nitty gritty details, uh, you can click that link and you'll have everything I can possibly find in one spot for you. The inside of the driver's side door is just like the other side, except for it has a few more buttons. All four power windows are one touch up and down. So even the back windows, they go all the way down just by pushing one button. Lift it up one time and it goes all the way up. Same thing here with the front. Door lock controls, side mirrors are adjusted here. You just turn it to pick a side and adjust it like a little joystick. Manually adjusted seat here for the driver's side, but they do have a height adjustment, so that's a little bit better, I guess. To the left of the steering column, there's your dimmer switch for your interior gauges. It also has automatic high beams, which is nice. You just have to make sure that's turned on with a little indicator light when you want to use it. And then it has a tilt and a telescoping steering column that it locks in place here. And that's easy to find and easy to use right there. Sitting in the driver's seat, checking it out. I really like the light colors in here. It kind of brightens it up a little bit. It looks nice with the gloss black as well. So I have the front seat all the way back and all the way down to give you an idea of my leg room. Remember, I'm six feet tall, just to give you an idea. Seems to be pretty good. I would probably have it all the way back, maybe a little, maybe one click forward to drive, maybe right in there, just a little bit more. So that way the alignment of the footrest is perfect and I can reach the steering wheel and all that stuff. So it's a leather wrap steering wheel. Little accent, metallic accent that goes around, that's pretty neat. It's soft too, a little bit softer than the average steer steering wheel. The, the thickness is decent. It's a little bit thicker down here than at the top for some reason. At least that's the way I feel. That's what it seems to me. Okay, so the buttons on the steering wheel, it has paddle shifters on the back. Okay, so you can shift up and down the speed ratios. It's actually a CVT transmission, so there's not actually gears per se but it is basically the same type of th type of deal but uh but right here at the bottom see these buttons these are for the radio so you have your volume for your radio voice recognition modes that's your um, audio source and then you can change through your tracks or your radio stations depending on what you're doing the cruise control is here on the right side now it's not a regular cruise control so you have I mean, it is because you can turn it off, you can set it, cancel it, and all that stuff. But you also have the radar adaptive cruise control, which you can set the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you using that. So it's going to keep you at a set distance away from the vehicle in front of you by slowing you down if the vehicle in front of you is going slower than your set speed. Now, this button is your lane tracing assist. Now, lane tracing is a little bit different than lane departure assist. So it actually follows the... the if there's clear lines on the road, it'll follow them. And it also follow the vehicle in front of you to keep you from, if you ever experienced this, where if you let go of the steering wheel just to test it out, uh, the steer, the vehicle waits till it gets all the way to the edge of the line and then jerks the wheel back. And then it kind of goes to the other side and jerks the wheel back. Well, this is little, the tracing, it actually follows the line. So it feels like it's actually driving itself in a way. Uh, you do have to keep your hand on the steering wheel, um, but it does, uh, you know, it doesn't bounce back all the time and, and it bounce off the lines. It actually traces like you would actually be driving. So the lane tracing assist um, 
you can turn that feature on or off here. Uh, same thing with the adaptive cruise control and all that stuff. So here on the left side, you have your, in addition to your voice recognition to to receive, you know, basically make calls and stuff, you can also push this button to receive calls or make calls here. These buttons correspond with the screen between the gate on the side of the gauges there uh, with the back button. We'll look at that in just a minute. Windshield wiper controls are there on the right side. Turn signals here on the left. It also has your headlight controls. So you can turn off your daytime running lights. Remember, they're in the headlight portion. Automatic parking, and then there's your headlights. Okay, so looking at the gauges, so on the far left is your RPMs, tachometer, engine coolant temperature. In the center is your big speedometer with your fuel gauge there at the bottom. But there on the right side has a little information screen with a digital speedometer right now. It shows your miles to empty and all that stuff. Now remember these buttons over here? These are the buttons we're going to use. I'm going to show you you can get more information on that little screen. So it's in addition to the regular gauges. So you don't actually have to go in here and look at all this stuff, but it is handy because it shows outside temperature, digital clock, shows you the status of the um, lane tracing assist and the adaptive cruise control there, and uh, what gear you're in and odometer and all that stuff. So if I scroll down, so you can see it's just part of a menu system where you can get some more information. Scrolling to the left or right, so you can see those little icons there. I'm just going to scroll through them quickly just so you can see what I'm talking about. So that's the first one. Second one, that get, focuses more on the lane tracing assist and the adaptive cruise control. Scrolling to the right again, this will be your fuel economy. You can get different information there. And then your settings, which you can turn things on or off. And any messages will show up there stored. And you go back to your original screen with your digital speedometer. So you can see it's all part of this menu system. This would be my default screen and I would probably just leave it there. So you notice the screen, this, uh, this touch screen is elevated. Um, so you see it's a little bit dis disconnected from the styling of the vehicle. The dash is straight and there's no contours to it. It's just kind of like it's propped up there. And the reason for that, sometimes, and I, this is what I thought at first, that that it's intended, it just looks like it's just tacked on, okay? But then I realized, after looking at these and, and like, why would they do that? And what I think is, it's able to get the view of the screen higher without increasing the height of the dash. So I still have good visibility over the dash, okay? And, but now I have a quickly access from like my eyes are here. I'm looking at the gauges and I have that to look at easily without taking my eyes too far down. Like to, sometimes the screens will be very low like this. Then I have to go back up. Like it's taking my eyes off the road too much uh, to access the information on the screen. Uh, so keeping the, the dash down and raising this, you kind of have to disconnect their, their styling so that way they're, the, the dash isn't contoured and all that stuff for the touchscreen. But anyways, you have a physical volume and tune through the stations. You have some physical buttons here on the side as well. And so right now we're in the, uh, you know, showing the audio source, but hitting the home button, um, audio, phone, and your drive computer, like you say, your miles per gallon and all that stuff will show up here. Getting a little bit of glare on the camera. Um, it's not showing up to my eyes. I can see it fine, but the camera is kind of showing a big glare So let's see if I can get to a different position here. Okay, so that's your home button split If I push menu, so that shows you these uh, different Choices basically audio phone your apps. It also has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto uh, projection there you will have to plug it in, your, your device, in order to set that up. And it'll just kind of automatically do it. So your audio. So you have your different choices there. AM, FM, USB, Bluetooth, iHeartRadio, IR, Slacker, NPR1, and Auxiliary. It's kind of they tack the Auxiliary at the end. But you can reorder them, so that's nice. Let's go back to the menu. See what the apps, what kind of apps they have. Um, basically a similar type deal. Get a little bit of overlap.
information so you can see basically the uh, you know, kind of like the drive computer similar to what we saw on the other screen but a little bit bigger and more more information and then there's the settings here Here's your radio screen. Let's go ahead and go there. So let's go to FM. So you can see your presets or your favorites there at the bottom. You can always go back and change your source and adjust your sound and all that stuff. There on the right side is your phone apps. So There's just physical buttons for everything as well. Climate control. There's your temperature, fan speed, where you want the air to blow, uh, front and rear defrosters, and recirculate the air, air conditioning, all that stuff. Fairly simple, it has a little uh, screen to show you the temperature, the fan speed there, and then the where you want the air to blow, like so. Okay, so there's a little storage space under here, and basically, you see this little USB port? It's kinda USB and auxiliary inputs right there. It's kinda hard to see, um, but I guess you would get used to know where it is and everything, but Basically, if you have your Apple CarPlay or Android Auto um, plugged in, you have to have your phone plugged in, you're pretty much only going to be able to use this little storage space right there. I guess you probably could put it in the glove compartment, but this is looks seems like this is what it's intended to go, right at there in this kind of dished out spot. There's no flat. It's not flat, though. That's the only thing. It's kind of like, I guess you would tilt it this way as you can look at it, I guess. Um, so this portion... It's just kind of rounded. Okay, so this is all hard touch surfaces. Except for then here. This it's not that soft, but I guess it is a little bit soft right in here. It's a, it's a lot a lot less soft than this. Okay, so here's your shifter. And let's go ahead and put it in reverse so we can check out the backup camera. And slightly offset as static guidelines neutral drive and then you have a manual mode and then you can use it like a ratchet shifter to change through the gear the speed ratios basically and you'll know what gear you're in because it'll show right here on this little screen same thing with the paddle shifters and as a uh, sport mode so if you want to get sporty with it, you can push that and turn that on. If you need to spin tires for whatever reason, you're stuck in the snow or something or mud, you can turn off the traction control and that way you can spin and get yourself out, hopefully. Electronic parking brake. Now, as you see, put it in drive, see how it disconnects and re, so it re-engages and re-engages and re-engages all by itself. Um, I think that's pretty cool and it, it engages the rear wheels. So you can always disengage it. You just hold the brake, push it down and disengage it manually or engage it like so. And then you have a brake hold feature. So this, if you push that uh, and this is on, then there's certain parameters like right now I'm saying the, the seat belt's um, not buckled so it's not gonna turn on. But basically this just holds the brakes for you while you're sitting in traffic while you have the vehicle in drive. So if you like that feature, that's, that's it. this one has it. There's cup holders, a little slight space here in the center. It doesn't go all the way down though. I guess it's only for mug handles or whatever. One, one thing, if you were to have this go all the way down, it's flat all the way across, then you can utilize this space for a little bit more than just cups. Okay, so the armrest, it has that blue stitching on it, matching the doors. Kind of soft, but it bottoms out quickly. Just a little soft surface on the top of the hard surface, I guess. And it's small, you know, small armrest. You're not going to share it with the passenger, of course. And so this lifts up. And this is where you'll find a USB charge port, 12 volt power supply, and a storage space. It has like this felt carpeting at the bottom. And a place for wires to go in and out of the compartment there. Rearview mirror has a manual day and night mode. Got some 
some tap lights up here look like standard bulbs turn on all the interior lights by pushing that button or have them all turn on with the door by having that engaged then you have this emergency SOS button so if you push that um, theoretically you'll get some roadside assistance and the visors have like this vinyl wrapping on them over like a hard plastic it feels like and then you have these mirrors with lights Now it has this uh, extension here, which is good. I like the extension a little bit better than the slider, like a sliding um, visor, because it adds to your coverage instead of just shifting the coverage. So I like that a little bit better. That's Who thinks about that? I don't know. Okay, so let's look in the back. And you can see the, uh, the visibility here is pretty dang good, except for the headrests. So the headrests are only the uh, kind of limitating. Now you can lower the seats and that way they're not in the way if you want. Uh, but the pillars in the back are not that big of a deal. But just overall, just looking over my shoulder and looking in the rearview mirrors, the visibility seems pretty dang good. Okay, so thank you for watching. Thank you to Sparks Toyota here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And uh, see you guys next time.